All right, so I got to ask you, do I look mm -hmm. like I'm stressing? No, nah, you ain't stressing. <laughs> Not with this setup. <laughs> You're on fusion. You got this. You doing just fine. A thousand dollar tip, though. Did you ever think you'd live to see the day? N yeah, we dream big. We dream big. You know, unfortunately, I grew up in a tough environment mm -hmm. in a, in a, at a very tough time. You know, the Bronx was burning. You know, it looked like Beirut. Um, or, you know, Palestine after a war, whatever the case may be. That's where I grew up. I, I, we didn't have street parks. We had mattresses, and we did backflips on the mattresses in the middle of rubble. How do you manage to stay connected to where you come from, to the people who are not living that life? Well, we, I'm, I, I'm, often, I'm often back in the Bronx. I'm often, like, every week I'm there. You know, like I, I told you off camera, I said I like to think I'm ghetto in New York and I'm bougie in Miami. <laughs> Which I love. So, so it's like... You know, I got one foot in, you know, in the summer we run basketball programs, we mentor the kids, we bring their favorite NBA players to play with them, teach them clinics. You know, I like to know what the people are thinking, what they're going through, and uh, that's how I've be, been able to be relevant in music to this day. What's it like working with J-Lo? J-Lo's it. She's the epitome. She's uh, the most, I know where J-Lo came from. So to know that she's become this mogul to where she's on American Idol, she's an established actress, a businesswoman, and she's beautiful. And the biggest thing about J-Lo is that she smells amazing. <laughs> Once you smell J-Lo, you'll be you like, never go you, back. you'll never forget the smell. It's amazing. I've been looking for the secret forever. You know, it's, when J-Lo came on the scene, when you came on the scene, it was mm -hmm. a big deal that all of a sudden there were these Latino artists who were big and who were mainstream. Mm -hmm. Now it's sort of... It's normal, right? Yeah, it's normal. I mean, I think the biggest artist in the world, black, white, Chinese, Asian, whatever you want to name, is Romeo Santos. I think he's pound for pound the biggest artist. You know, he sold out Yankee Stadium by himself two nights in a row. That's like 70, 80,000 people. He's everything. He's from the Bronx, so he, he has a hard background. Uh, his influence is on R&B, and he sings in Spanish, and the women love him. And my gringa mother loves him. So if you're watching, <laughs> Romeo, Jane, Jane's waiting for a call from you. <laughs> I mean, listen, listen you, you look at the Latino community. I grew up uh, speaking English predominantly, um, which a lot of us do. And there are still so many mis Stereotypes. Of course. And uh, for years I've been campaigning where, you know, people think that this is like, you know, that Latinos don't speak English and we all you know, cholos and wear our stuff up. And then some of the brightest guys are from East LA right now running the biggest companies in the world. And, and Latinos are so articulate and smart. And finally, we have a channel that's geared towards English speaking Latinos. And, and the, the, the next president a couple of years from now might be Latino and they speak English fluently. So I, I was really proud. I was changing my channel. I seen Fusion and I was like, wow, finally somebody and it, it, it and the demographic, we're outgrowing any other demographic in the next 50 years. So this is totally perfect, this channel right here. And I've been screaming this as loud as possible, but I'm glad they finally getting it. I'm glad that you are a fan. You have been watching all your interviews to get ready for this mm -hmm. one. You had this interview from, I think, 2011, where you talk about the fact that hip hop's run by a gay mafia. What do you mean mm -hmm. by that? Well, it, I didn't necessarily mean it like that. What happened, it, it, it was taken out of context, no matter how they chopped it up. <laughs> the, guy, the guy asked me a question. He says, do you think you ever rapped with a gay rapper? I said, I'm sure I've rapped with a gay rapper. In fact, I encourage the gay rapper, if he's somebody I knew for 10, 20 years, come out the closet, B. It's over for the stereotypes. If you gay, we don't like you. You know, uh, Frank Ocean came out and announced he was gay and he sold more records than Usher and Beyonce that week. There is no more where you got to hide who you are. I, I, I just encourage people to, uh, be proud of what they are, and, and, and you don't have to hide it no more. You can put it on Front Street.